In an earlier lesson, you learned about the reference stall speed, BSR, the calibrated airspeed at which a large aircraft in the IASA category CS25 stalls. You also learned that stalling is caused by exceeding the critical angle of attack. Stalling has nothing to do with the speed of the aircraft. The critical angle of attack can be exceeded at any speed. It is worth noting here that to do so in the upper end of an aircraft speed range is likely to exceed its structural limitation, or G limit. However, it has been shown that if an aircraft is flown straight and level, and the speed reduced at a rate of not more than one knot per second, then it is possible to identify the CAS at which it stalls, which will be a 1G stalling speed. This reference stall speed is the speed on which are based the recommended takeoff, maneuver, approach, and landing speeds, which will give an adequate safety margin above the stall during normal operations. These are calculated as proportions of VSR 1.05, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 VSR, etc. There are several factors that can affect the value of VSR. They are weight, maneuvering the aircraft, increasing the load factor, configuration changes, affecting maximum lift coefficient and pitching moment, engine thrust or propeller slipstream, Mach number, wing contamination, and heavy rain. We shall now examine how these changes work. In straight and level flight, the weight of the aircraft is balanced by the lift. So the load factor, which is lift over weight, is 1. Whilst n in brackets is the correct symbol for load factor, the relationship between lift and weight has for years been popularly known as G. 1G corresponds to the force normally acting on us, that is, gravity. If more lift is generated than weight, the load factor will be greater than 1. The force acting on the aircraft and everything in it, including of course the pilot, will be more than normal gravity. If lift equals weight, the load factor will be 1, as you have seen. And from the lift formula, lift equals half rho v squared times Cl times S, it can be seen that lift will change whenever any of the other factors in the formula change. Taking density, rho, and wing area, S, to be constant for this example, consider what would happen if thrust is reduced. The speed, v, would reduce because of drag. And from the formula, you can see that lift would decrease. So, to keep lift constant and maintain 1g flight at a reduced speed, Cl must be increased by flying at a higher angle of attack. Any further reduction in speed would need a further rise in angle of attack with each succeeding lower CAS corresponding to a greater angle of attack. Eventually, at a certain CAS, the wing reaches its critical angle and CL max, beyond which any further rise in angle of attack will precipitate a stall. We can transpose and adapt the lift formula to give us a formula for a 1G stalling speed which equals the square root of lift over half rho times Cl max times S. Note that density altitude does not affect indicated stall speed. At Cl max for 1G flight, a change in weight requires a change in lift. And it can be seen from the 1G stall speed formula that for instance, an increase in weight, and therefore lift, 
will increase the S1G. The relationship between basic stalling speeds at two different weights can be obtained from the following formula. The new speed equals the old speed multiplied by the square root of the new weight as a proportion of the old weight, or the square root of new over old. The angle of attack at which the stall occurs will not be affected by the weight. This is provided that the appropriate value of CL max is not affected by speed, which will only happen at speeds above Mach 0.4. To maintain a given angle of attack, say critical angle or alpha CL max, in level flight, if the weight and therefore the lift required is changed, it is necessary to change the dynamic pressure. In other words, the CAS. For example, if an aircraft stalls at 150 knots at a weight of 588,600 newtons, what is the 1G stalling speed at 470,880 newtons? Using the formula, the new to old weight proportion is 470,880 over 588,000 600, which is 0 0.8. The square root of this is 0 0.894, which multiplied by 150 is 134. So the new stalling speed is 134 knots. A useful rule of thumb that can be derived from such calculations is that halving the percentage change in weight either up or down, will give the approximate percentage change in stalling speed. In the example, a 20% weight reduction gives about a 10% speed reduction. This rule of thumb can be very useful, not least as a gross error check during exams. As you know, in straight and level flight, lift balances weight. But in a level turn, for example at 45 degrees, as shown here, the weight will still be acting vertically downwards, and the wings need to produce a vertical lift vector to balance it. However, as you can see from the diagram, the lift vector is tilted at 45 degrees and if it is resolved into vertical and horizontal vectors, it is insufficient to balance the weight. The lift must therefore be increased, so that its vertical component balances the weight, and the relationship between the vertical force and the lift required can be found using trigonometry, using the symbol phi as the bank angle, and taking the vertical force required as 1, the adjacent lift being the hypotenuse. Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And if we transpose this formula, we arrive at L equals 1 over cos phi. Cos phi in this case, at 45 degrees, is 0 0.707. 1 divided by 0 0.707 is 1.41. So, for a level 45 degree bank turn, the lift must be 1.41 times that of straight flight, or, to put it another way, increased by 41%. You learned in the previous part of this lesson on stalling that to bank an aircraft and maintain level flight lift must be greater than weight. The additional lift required is gained by increasing the angle of attack. The measure of the relationship between lift and weight is known as the load factor. Increasing lift in a turn increases the load factor. So as bank angle increases, load factor increases. In straight and level flight at CL max, 
it would be impossible to turn and maintain altitude, as trying to increase lift would stall the aircraft. If a turn were to be started at a speed above the stalling speed, then at a certain angle of bank, CL would reach its maximum, and the aircraft would stall at a speed higher than the 1G stalling speed. The increase of lift in a level turn is a function of the bank angle. Using the following formula, it is possible to calculate stalling speed as a function of bank angle or load factor. The turning stall speed will equal the 1G stall speed multiplied by the square root of 1 over the cosine of the bank angle. As an example, if the 1G stalling speed is 150 knots, what would be the stalling speed at 45 degrees of bank? The working on the screen shows the result to be 178 knots CAS. Using the same sequence for 60 degrees of bank, a 2G turn in level flight gives a stalling speed of 212 knots CAS, which is 41% greater than the 1G stalling speed. The 45 degree stalling speed is 19% higher. And, since these figures are ratios, they will hold good for any aircraft. As bank angle is increased, the stalling speed will rise exponentially. Whilst operating at high CLs, particularly during takeoff and landing, only moderate angles of bank should be used when manoeuvring the aircraft. For modern high speed jet transports, the maximum bank that should be used is 30 degrees, except in an emergency. The normal maximum under instrument flight rules, IFR, is 25 degrees or the angle of bank for a rate 1 turn, 3 degrees per second, if this is less. At higher altitudes, the normal maximum would be about 10 to 15 degrees. In brief, load factor does not affect the stalling angle of attack, but the stalling speed increases in proportion with the square root of the load factor, in the same way as it does with the weight increase since G is an effective increase in weight.